Hi everyone, my name is Takia Greer and I'm a first year PhD student in the health education doctoral program at the University of Cincinnati. And I will be sharing with you my study titled Demographic Factors of Sexuality Related Risk Behaviors Among Youth Grades 9 through 12 Results from the 2019 YRBS. I would like to acknowledge the CDC and, of course, my research advisor, Dr. Rojas Geiler. So just a little background to help you understand the study a little bit more. At the end of 2018, there were 1.2 million people in the United States living with HIV, and there were a total of 37,832 new HIV diagnoses. 21% of those were among the youth population. And so basically the purpose of this study was to evaluate differences in HIV related risk factors, health behaviors and sexual behaviors among youth by dem different demographic factors because we know that HIV and STDs disproportionately affect minorities and the LGBTQIA plus community. So as you can see in the boxes highlighted at the bottom of this slide, we examined three different variables, and those variables are risk behaviors, sexual behaviors, and health behaviors. Risk behaviors in this study were defined as factors that may increase the risk of HIV and STD transmission. Um, and of course, it's known that youth participate in different risk behaviors. In the boxes below, I've highlighted what the literature suggests, but I definitely want to highlight the first two boxes, um, which state that 19% of all sexually active students use some sort of substance before their most recent sexual experience, and 20% of males who have sex with other males use some sort of substance before their most recent sexual experience. Sexual behaviors in this study were defined as behaviors that are sexual and increase the risk of HIV and STD. TD transmission and also reduce health behaviors. So this um, could be if someone has ever had intercourse, the age of their first intercourse, and the number of partners in their lifetime. Um, and literature suggests that about 54% of students that reported that they are sexually active did not use a condom during the last time that they participated in intercourse. And then health behaviors in this study were defined as lifestyle behaviors that reduce the risk of HIV and STD transmission, such as HIV testing and condom use. And again, I just wanna highlight what the literature suggests. Um, condom use has decreased in sexually active students from 62% to 54%. So you can see that the low rates of testing in the youth population and the low rates of condom use means that there's a high chance that there are youth who may have HIV or an STD and might actually be unaware of that. So now we move on to the methods and we're gonna start off with the study design. In this study, we used um, so we utilized secondary data analysis of the YRBS, um, and that is conducted by the CDC every two years. And the study design was also a cross-sectional study looking at data from a population at one specific point in time. There were 13,677 students that participated in this study, and the students that participated were a representative sample of 9th through 12th graders in the U.S. And I just want to point out that there was an oversampling of Black and Hispanic students due to the underrepresentation of each group. So the procedures of this study, the CDC um, collected this data using the YRBS, which as I mentioned before, is a survey. And it was um, a self-administered test that is computer scan or computer scannable and was completely anonymous and voluntary for each student to complete. Each student completed the survey during class and that took about 45 minutes to complete. Once all of the surveys were collected, the data collected from the surveys were made available to the public through the YRBSS website. 
So when looking at this survey, a total of 99 items were used in the YRBS that examined different health behaviors, such as alcohol and drug use, diet, and physical activity. Out of those 99 items, our study actually utilized 16 of those items to assess HIV-related health behaviors, risk behaviors, sexual behaviors, and the demographics of the participants in the study. As you can see, we broke each question um, utilized into different categories based on our definitions um, of health behaviors, risk behaviors, sexual behaviors, and of course the demographics of each of the students. And we examined a total of six different research questions and we will look at these as we begin to discuss the results. But first we're gonna look at the data analysis and we used SPSS software to analyze the data. And prior to analysis, data was evaluated for missing values, outliers, and other data entry issues. And I just want to point out that the missing values were removed from analysis and the remaining values were readjusted to valid percents. And there was also a recoding of selected variables. So for example, we recoded age into four different categories based on the survey responses that we received. So for our research question analysis, we used um, the ANOVA Welch test to compare two means due to the fact that we were comparing continuous data by categorical data. And then we used the chi-square test when examining the significance of two different categorical variables. And then for research question five, we also used um, a t-test. And on this slide, you can see how we um, analyzed each question utilizing each test. So now we're gonna look at the results, um, starting with the participants. And as you can see in the tables, 75% of the participants were between the ages of 15 and 17 years old. And there was an even spread of male and females um, and also an even spread of age groups. And you can see that on the left side of the screen. On the right side of the screen, you can see um, the ethnicity, race, and sexual identity of the students. Majority of the students in this study were white. And as I mentioned before, there was an oversampling of um, black and Hispanic students. And you can see that their um, uh, percentages are highlighted in the red boxes. And then of course, majority of the students in this study were heterosexual and about 16% um, of the students identified as gay, lesbian, bi, or unsure. So when looking at the risk behavior, 7.4% of all students use drugs during their last intercourse. And when you do the math, that's actually about 19% of sexually active students. And 1.8% of the students have injected drugs at least once in their lives. 38% of students have had sex at least once. Of that 38% of sexually active students, 2,370 students were 15 or 16 at the age of their first intercourse. And that's about 53% of the sexually active students. And of the sexually active students, 55% had more than one sexual partner in their lifetime, and 11% had six or more partners. So when we look at the health behaviors, there were a total of 4,440 sexually active students. Only 57% used a condom during their last intercourse and 43% did not. Only 10.2% have been tested for HIV and only 7.1% have been tested for an, HIV, for an STD. So now we're gonna look at the results of each research question. And for the sake of time, I will just really highlight the important things. So when looking at the differences in injection drug use by demographic variable, there was no significance for grade. And these charts show that men were more likely to report yes than women. And um, American Indians and Blacks were more likely to report yes. Hispanic and Latinos were more likely to report um, than expected. And I just want to note that the 
um, graphs may seem small for the participants that answered yes, but the numbers are still significant. So for example, there's 15 students um, highlighted in the 13 years or younger um, age group that answered yes to injection drug use compared to the 20 students that answered no, but that 15, that number is very significant even though it is small. And then um, when looking at sexual orientation, gays and lesbians and participant who's, participants who were unsure were more likely to say yes to injection drug use. So when looking at differences in substance use at last intercourse by demographic variables, um, those under the age of 14 were more likely to report yes to drugs um, during their last intercourse, and those unsure about their sexual orientation were more likely to say yes. When looking at the research question, are there differences in HIV and STD testing by demographic variables? Uh, blacks were more likely to report being tested for HIV and STDs, and American Indians and Alaskan Natives um, who identified as multiracial were also more likely to be tested for STDs. And again, you can see the graphs being broken down into a, um, age and um, the average age of those reporting HIV and STD testing is higher than those um, not reporting HIV or STD testing. And then lastly, those who identified as gay and lesbian and bisexual were more likely to say yes. So when looking at differences in condom use at last intercourse by demographic variable, participants over the age of 18, women, 12th graders, and heterosexual sexuals were less likely to report condom use, meaning that there's a less perceived risk of HIV and STDs in these groups. Those who began having intercourse at earlier ages, um, were more likely to report both HIV and STD testing than those who began at later ages. And this was the research question that examined um, if there were differences in HIV and STD testing by age of first intercourse. And then we looked at if there are differences in HIV and STD testing by number of sexual partners. And those reported that they had been tested for HIV and STDs had a higher average number of partners than those who reported that they have not been tested for HIV, um, which is good, but it still shows that there is less of a perceived risk of HIV and STD transmission in those with less partners. And so just some quickly some limitations. Um, the data was secondary, so the questions were already set, um, and it was not representative of everyone in the age group, and it really only applied to students who attended school, so you're missing those values from those who may be homeschooled or not even attending school or may even be homeless. Um, there was also a possibility of some response and recall bias in um, the answers, so some social desirability, dishonesty, and lack of answering questions um, are some possibilities. Um, and then, of course, the most recent data set is from 2019, so it may these results may not represent um, you know, what's happening now in 2021. And also it does not report on the determinants of the behavior. So we know the what, but not the why. And basically in order to conclude um, this study, um, uh, these are my conclusions. So in order to address the HIV epidemic, it is important to, of course, address HIV in the youth population, especially in minority groups in the youth population, because we can see that there are differences um, by demographic factors. And um, we can also see that there's many gaps in research. There are a few studies that report on the factors that contribute to the low HIV and STD testing rates, and there's very limited data that assesses risk behaviors. And more research needs to be um, conducted in the youth populations, and research needs to focus on a wider range of demographics and needs to specifically prioritize the minority um, youth population since HIV and STDs disproportionately affects them. And of course, we need to target our research to begin to figure out the why um, 
in reference to the differences among the demographic variables so that we can begin to create strategies to decrease HIV and STD um, rates in the youth population. And sexual health education needs to begin at an earlier age. It needs to be more comprehensive because as you can see, there was a lot of activity in the younger age groups. And these are my references. And thank you so much. Um, I am open to taking questions or if you have any additional questions, feel free to email me, it is on the screen. Thank you.